ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಪಾತ್ರ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿ ಗುಣಾರಣ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ so uh, until now until the 48th sutra we have <coughs> studied the trimantra prakarana of the omukshupadi consisting of three prakaranas namely trimantra prakaranam jaya prakaranam and charma shloka prakaranam <coughs> we have studied the background of trimantra how it was <coughs> given as an upadesha or instruction what are the three components in the form of three words om namaha and narayana and in that <coughs> om also what are the three components namely akara ukara and makara and <coughs> incidentally we have also briefly touched upon the role of shri our goddess mahalakshmi whose presence in uniting the jivatma with the paramatma yeah. is imperative and mandated and invariable also one cannot do without it so ultimately he says pulla loka acharya says in the previous sutra to conclude this topic saying he says ahaicheerti uddeshamai vittadi not only is the togetherness of goddess shri and lord shriman narayana it is not coincidental it is <coughs> unavoidable not unavoidable in the sense in a very good sense <coughs> so it is very much desirable many times what happens somebody becomes unavoidable and that becomes undesirable but in this case this is unavoidable and desirable both together <laughs> so having said that <coughs> he then continues with the exposition of the remaining part of the word om he says idile chaturthi erikkaliyum so the knowledge of sanskrit language is very important and sanskrit grammar is also very important if one has to understand this the meaning of this sutra so in sanskrit we have a very robust and systematic karaka system it is known as the karaka system which means the relationship which is known by what is known as vibhakti it is already also generally called as an interjection in english so when you talk about the english parts of speech you talk about the noun pronoun verb adjective adverb then um interjection conjunction interjection and one more so <clears throat> the case endings are for example you say rama and you 
have Rama, one very big uh, disadvantage in English language is in English language you don't have any word to identify whether a word is in nominative case or in accusative case. Accusative case or objective case. Both are <coughs> synonymous. So for example, the main disadvantage here is you change the order of the words, the meaning will automatically change. For example, Rama killed Ravana. If you change the order of the words, Ravana killed Rama, <laughs> the opposite meaning will be uh, will become evident. <clears throat> because there is no suffix or prefix in the form of an interjection which actually helps us identify whether a word is in nominative case which denotes the agency of the action or whether it is in accusative case or objective case which denotes that this is the object. But for the other cases like instrumental case, dative case, ablative case, you have interjections like from or by by Rama and then for uh, dative case you have for an ablative case you have by or from once again then <coughs> for the locative case you have in so in Rama as we say and the whether the word is in nominative case or accusative case is determined by the position of the word in the sentence so if the word is after the verb, so this is, a, I don't think it is too technical. Even if it is too technical, we have to try to understand it because this is what is going to be dealt with in today's class. So if a word <coughs> is situated after the verb, then you have to understand that that word is in objective case or accusative case. If it is before the verb, then you have to understand that that word is the is in nominative case or the word that denotes the meaning that exists in nominative case is the agent of the action. What we call as karta in Sanskrit. So when you say Rama eats a fruit. So here eats is the verb. So since Rama is heard or pronounced before the verb eats. The word Rama, the person Rama who is denoted by the word Rama is the agent of the action of eating. So this, what we call as agent in technical jargon, technical grammatical jargon, agent means in business language agent has a different meaning. But now we are using the where the agent in the sense of the doer of a particular action. So the agent of eating is denoted by the word Rama, which actually essentially means a person named Rama. In the word Rama, it's a fruit. And then since the word fruit succeeds the verb eats, it is the object on which the activity of eating is carried out. So there is no suffix or prefix to exactly denote whether a word is in nominative case or objective case. Whereas in Sanskrit language it's not so. Ramaha Ravanam Hanti. Ravanam Hanti Ramaha. Hanti Ravanam Ramaha. Anyway you change the order of the words, the meaning does not change. Because and the case suffixes are added to the word and they become one with the word. So in linguistics, it is known as an agglutinative type of language. So Sanskrit is an agglutinative type of language. The word used is agglut agglutinative and non-agglutinative. So English, Hindi, etc. are non-agglutinative type of languages according to the <coughs> science of linguistics. So you say from Rama, from is a different word and Rama is a different word. By Rama, by is a different word, Rama is a different word. 
Whereas in Sanskrit, if you have to say from Rama, you say Ramat. Or if you have to say Ram for Rama, Ramaya. Yeah. So it is a single word. That means the suffix gets attached to the nominal stem. <coughs> Therefore, <coughs> this is how it is to be understood. So here Pudlaloka Acharya says, Idile Chaturthi Erikkaliyum. So <coughs> here, as we studied earlier, the word Om is actually the denoter of the meaning of the word Narayanaya. So the meaning denoted by the word Narayanaya is briefly mentioned by the word Om. So for those of you who are familiar with the word Narayanaya, the <clears throat> there are two portions in the word Narayanaya. One is Narayana, the nominal stem, and then Aya, which is actually the portion of the Chaturthi Bhakti or the dating case. So, since the word Om is mentioning in a brief manner the meaning of the word Narayanaya itself, that also has to have a dative ending. In, the same, in other words, it should end in dative case only. But here, when you listen to the word Om, you don't actually, you are not able to recognize the dative case suffix when you listen to the word Om. Then what happened to the dative case? How do you say that? There is the dative case suffix here. So here Pradhyadoka Acharya says the dative case has been appended but <clears throat> in Sanskrit, according to Sanskrit language there is a <clears throat> rule which says that certain suffixes allied, it is called as Lopa in Sanskrit. So that suffix <clears throat> denoting or that suffix which is indicative of the Chaturthi Bhakti has been, has elided, in the sense it has disappeared due to the, due to a particular rule of Sanskrit grammar. It is known as Supam Suluk, that is the Paninian <coughs> Sutra or aphorism that is laying down a particular rule where in, it says in certain cases certain suffixes which are in the meaning which are used in meaning of certain cases will elide or they will disappear therefore Pradhyadoka Acharya says Irilayachatur Thiyeri Kariyum in email so Manadamamani actually explains it in this manner. In email, idil vibhaktyartham arulichai vadaha prathamam prathamam vibhakti dhannai nirdeshi kirat idile chaturthi erikkali yuminni ravadai vakaratile chaturthi ire supam sulukkityari sutrattale luptamai pop yengai Then <clears throat> Pradhanav Kacharya himself asks the question. Chaturthi erina padiyan nil. The answer is given in the next sutra. Narayana padatthik sangrahama irikkayade. And what is the impact of the <coughs> suffix of Chaturthi appearing and then disappearing? It says, he says, <clears throat> so, it is very well explained in by Manuala Mamni further. Vibhatyan taramil illaan kidakka yuvakaratil chaturthida chaturthiyerina paditane yenganeyan nil yenganeyan gira shankayay anuvadikkirar 
ചതുർത്ഥിയേറിന പടിയെന്നെന്നിൽ എന്ന് അതൊക്കെ ഉത്തരമറുളിച്ചിരാർ നാരായണ പദത്തുക്ക് സംഗ്രഹമായിരിക്കയാതെ എന്ത് അതാവത് യുവകാരം ചതുർത്ഥ്യന്തമാണ് നാരായണ പദത്തുക്ക് സംഗ്രഹമായാതെ ഇതിലും ചതുർത്ഥിയേരി ചതുർത്ഥിയേരി തെങ്കൈ ഇങ്ങനാൽ ഇരണ്ടുക്കും സംഗ്രഹ വിവരണത്വം സിദ്ധിയാതിരേ ഇത്താൽ ചൊല്ലുഹിരൻ അർത്ഥം താനേ എന്ന ചൊല്ലുഹിരൻ അർത്ഥം താൻ ഏൻ എന്ന അരുളിച്ചിരാർ ഇത്താൽ ഈശ്വരനക്ക് ശേഷമെങ്കിലത് എന്ത് അതാവത് ഇരുതാൻ താതൃത്യേ ചതുർത്ഥിയാഹയാലേ ഈ ചതുർത്ഥിയാൽ ഈശ്വരനക്ക് ശേഷമെന്ന് വിണം ചൊല്ലുഹിര നെങ്കൈ so it's a slightly complicated concept that we have to understand here once again we have to understand the karaka system of sanskrit very well if we if one has understood it very well he can easily understand it otherwise it can be understood with the help of a proper lucid explanation which i propose to give so if you have any further doubt you may kindly ask without any hesitation so bhadanoka acharya says here the chaturthi bhakti or the ability case suffix has come and gone then the question is asked how do you say that it is the exactly the ability case suffix only why not say it as the genitive case suffix why can't it be the accusative case suffix why can't it be some other there are seven six cases or seven cases that is nominative case accusative case instrumental dative ablative genitive and locative so prathama bhakti dvitiya bhakti tritiya bhakti tarti bhakti kalit with those names in sanskrit so in english based on the meaning these are the names used to denote the cases so prathama bhakti is nominative case which denotes the agency generally then dvitiya bhakti is accusative case or objective case where the object is denoted then tritiya bhakti is the instrumental case where generally the instrument is denoted there are some or many uh, exceptions or apavadas or as they are known as in sanskrit language then dati case ability case then genitive case and locative case so genitive case generally denotes relationship locative case <coughs> denotes the location in which the object exists for example bharat deshe kalyana nagari vartate bharat deshe it is in locative case that means the city of bangalore is located in bharat desha or indian the land of india so the question is raised or objection is raised how do you actually determine that it is the chaturthi bhakti or the dative case suffix that has come and disappeared why not the ablative case suffix or why not the locative case suffix then the answer is given by pillai lokacharya he says narayana padatuk sangraham airikkayane <clears throat> since the word om mentions the same meaning that is denoted by the word narayana ya in a concise manner we deduce that it is the chaturthi vibhakti suffix because narayana ya means the word narayana having the chaturthi vibhakti or dative case suffix it becomes narayanaya just like ramaya dasharathaya krishnaya etc <clears throat> since the word om has the same meaning of narayanaya it is mentioned in a concise manner we determine that it is the dative case suffix that is that has come and gone it has been applied but it has disappeared due to a particular grammatical rule that is mentioned by padini which governs all the aspects associated with sanskrit grammar 
here also one very important aspect is pointed out by <coughs> Swami Manavada Mahavani in a beautiful manner. <coughs> he says, Ravade Vakaram Chaturthyan Tamana Nara in a Padatik Sangrahamahi Ade, Girum Chaturthi Ritten Gay Ingan Ingananda Hilirendicum Sangraha Veranatun Sitia Dire. In case you don't accept this, then what happens? What we mentioned earlier does not stand. In the sense, it was mentioned that the word Om denotes concisely what is actually mentioned by Narayana. Yeah? <clears throat> In case we say the meaning of Om is different and Narayana is different, what we mentioned until now does not stand and we will be contradicting our own words. So if we have to avoid contradiction, it has to be interpreted in this manner only. That is what Swami Manavada Mahami beautifully explains. Then he says one more very important aspect. He says, here also the meaning of the abdate deity case has to be determined properly. So the Karaka rule has to be properly, very precisely understood. If we have to appreciate the meaning of the word Narayana, yeah. So what is the meaning of the dating case suffix? So you have Narayana, yeah, just like Rama, yeah, Krishna, yeah, etc. But generally, the meaning of the Chaturthi Vibhakti suffix or dative case suffix is for the sake of. In that for the sake of actually what happens, there are two different, very subtle differences or two subtle meanings are there. So I will give examples, examples for both of them, then you will be able to understand. The first thing is, first Example is Vipraya Gam Dadati. So he gives a cow in charity to the Brahmin. This is the meaning of the word, of the sentence Vipraya Gam Dadati, which is the example I am quoting to begin with. Here, the, a cow is given to a Brahmin for the sake of what? Why does he give a cow to a Brahmin? Because the Shastras say that if a cow, cow is given in charity to a Brahmin, then he will get great amount of kunya or virtue as they call it, as they loosely translated in English. <clears throat> so the Vipra or the Brahmana is the person who is authorized to take a dana or charity. Once again, the word charity is not equal to dana. So recently, last week, one Mr. Rajiv Malhotra, who has <coughs> given a lot of, uh, written a lot of books about Indian culture and heritage, he has written a book, released a book called The Sanskrit Non-Translatables, which means, he says, we say, Papa is sin, Punya is virtue, something, something like this, several Loose translations. Vyakarana is grammar. <laughs> or dharma is virtue or something, something like this. Which is not correct. Because there are no exact equal translations that in which all the connotations of the word are, <coughs> are can be uh, explained in English. So he has quoted all these examples and written a beautiful work called the Sanskrit non-translatables, meaning these words do not have exact translations in any other language. Not only in English, which is a foreign language, even in Indian languages, there are no <laughs> equal translations. So in Indian languages, what do we do? We, do, we use those words only. So Punya and Papa are used in Canada, they are used in Hindi, Punya or Pap, so in Tamil also they are used Punyam Pavam. Papa is used as 
பாவ பாவம் and <coughs> punya is used as punya only so most of these are dharma dharma in english no you have no equal in kannada we use it as dharma in hindi it is dharma in tamil it is dharma and i am sure it is the same in bengali oriya and all the other languages <laughs> because all of them have their origin in sanskrit so in indian in the indian context we don't have much problems in malayalam also it is the same in telugu also it is the dharma is the same in all indian languages including north indian south indian all languages punya and papa there are no equivalents so they are used as it is in all the indian languages so <clears throat> this is one very important aspect that we have to note so here what happens vipraya gam dadati he gives a cow in charity to the brahmana this is the example so here who is the beneficiary the beneficiary is the giver not the taker taker is also the beneficiary that is the receiver is also beneficiary because he benefits with the cow but the higher beneficiary is the giver rather than the taker because when the brahm brahmin accepts the cow in charity as dana <laughs> it is mentioned that <laughs> he has to perform that number of gayatri he has to chant the number of that number of gayatri mantras as the number of hairs found in the cow in the body of the cow <laughs> so taking godana is a very tricky <laughs> uh, issue of course nobody does it now nobody gives much even if they give the takers do not find <laughs> so the shastras say if he accepts a cow in charity as dana he has to perform the equivalent number of gayatri japas equivalent number a number that is equivalent to the number of hairs that exist in the cow so it may be several uh, one you may it may come to several hundred thousands we don't know. nobody knows <laughs> nobody has to in the sense he has to do several hundred thousands of gayatri so it comes with a price actually they say everything comes with a price so even though he is receiving the cow free of cost to overcome because what is the spirit of dana what is the spirit of charity in indian culture the spirit of dana is always even if we take 1 rupee or 2 rupees or 100 rupees or 1000 rupees the sin committed by the giver is transferred to the taker <clears throat> therefore to absolve himself of the sins that are transferred to the taker to himself that is the taker the taker of the charity should actually perform so much of japa and overcome the sin that has transferred that has been transferred to him from the giver similarly when in the process of namaskara or prostrating also what happens the sins committed by the person who prostrates are transferred to the person who is prostrated to so he has to be very careful so that is why in shri vishnuva sampradaya we can prostrate to anybody even a young child we can prostrate but if somebody else prostrates to us we have to be very very careful it is better to avoid as much as possible but then what happens this is all very 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 beautiful beautifully done in shri vishnu philosophy and practice so in shri vishnu philosophy what happens if somebody prostrates this person also prostrates back to him then what happens both the prostrations are accepted by the supreme lord narayana 
मध्ये तिष्ठति माधव सो इफ वन पर्सन प्रॉस्ट्रेट टू मी देन इमीडिएटली आई प्रॉस्ट्रेट बैक टू हिम देन the process of given can taken has even doubt we both absorb our sins of our sins because both of us are prostrating to the madhava lord madhava madhava narayana who stands in between the two persons so it is very very important it's a very beautiful practice that in shri vaishnava sampradaya when somebody prostrates we prostrate back to them thus evening out the giving and taking of sins but on the other hand suppose a person is a guru or acharya or a father <coughs> or an elder elder brother or mother or somebody then that person need not prostrate back then actually he is authorized to bless the person who is prostrating at that time what happens after blessing or before blessing he actually concentrates on his acharya or the supreme lord narayana and he doesn't accept the prostrations to himself in fact he actually transfers it to his elders then also there is no question of he accepting he having the sins of the anger person who prostrates and secondly as an acharya as a father as a as an elderly brother as a mother or a senior person <coughs> then he is authorized to bless them so at that time also while blessing he blesses with the remembrance of his own acharya or the supreme lord then also he is not accepting it for himself he is doing it on behalf of his acharya or the supreme lord then also the sins do not get transferred to the elderly person on the other hand the sins definitely get transferred to the elderly, even if he is an elderly person if he thinks that oh see this person has prostrated to me i am so great so in india we have <laughs> several swami ji sent elderly so called elderly people whose ego is boosted who feel elated in somebody whom they feel who they feel is very important prostrate then they will feel elated then definitely the sins committed by him will be acquired by the person who is being prostrated so you have to be very 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 careful in this regard so anyway that's incidentally i mentioned that so vipraya gam dadati in this case the main beneficiary is the giver rather than the taker who is the brahmin in this case so it is there though it is that in case here the beneficiary major beneficiary is the giver so that is not what is mentioned here by the word narayanaya or the chaturthi which is understood to be there in the word om there is another case of chaturthi that we which says tadarthye chaturthi varthya it is for the sake of the meaning of chaturthi vyakti or the dative case of it is for the sake of and the example given is yu upaya daru so a person was taking a big log of wood then another person asked him why are you taking this wood what for are you taking this log of wood then the person who was carrying the log of wood said yu upaya daru i am carrying this wood for the sake of making it into a sacrificial pole which is known as upastamba in the yagna procedure so they say it has to be in the yagna procedure there has to be what is called as a upastamba or a sacrificial pole which is used for various purposes 
So Upaya, in that there is the dative case, which means this log of wood is for the sake of making it into a Upastambha or sacrificial altar. <coughs> so here in the world, in the context of Narayanaya also it is <coughs> this Jivatma is for the sake of the Supreme Lord Narayana. So this is known as Tadartha. So Pardini actually says Chaturthi Tadartha Artha Balihita Sukharakshitai. Beautiful Sutra of Pardini. <coughs> Which says Chaturthi Tadartham. That means this Jivatma is Narayana. Yeah, it is for the sake of Narayana only. So here <coughs> it is the Tadarthya, just as it's not like in the case of Viprayagam Dadadi, where also the dative case is used. On the other hand, it is the example that is quoted as Upaya Daru. It is Tadarthya Chaturthi, which means just as the log of wood is used for the sake of making a sacrificial altar. This Jivatma is there for being subservient to the Supreme Lord Narayana. So it is for the sake of the Lord Supreme Lord. So what does this imply? Then Pridhalokacharya says, Manavadamavani says, Tadarthya Chaturthya Heyade Chaturthya Ishwara Nakshesha Minna Vidam Shudru Hiradim Gai So what is the use of giving all this explanation? It means this Jeevatma is purely for the enjoyment of the Supreme Lord. This Jeevatma has owes his existence for being subservient to the Supreme Lord. So Tadarthya Chaturthi is the native case is used here, supposedly used here because you are not actually <coughs> openly listening to the existence of the Chaturthi, but it is understood here. He said it's understood or implied. So the implied dative case suffix denotes that this Jivatma is totally subservient to the Supreme Lord. He exists for the enjoyment of the Supreme Lord. Of course, <laughs> when he is actually taken for taken as his bhogya, as an object of enjoyment by the Supreme Lord. This Jivatma also experiences wonderful bliss. That's a different uh, issue altogether. But <clears throat> that is what he is going to beautifully explain in the next few sutras. So ultimately, the meaning of the implied Chaturthi Vakti suffix or dative case suffix, which is accepted to be existing in the world home is that this Jivatma is purely for the sake of Paramatma. He is subservient to the Paramatma. He exists purely at the sweet will of Paramatma. In all ways he is indebted to him. So that is what is to be understood as far as the world home is concerned. <clears throat> Next comes the question. Sheshatam Dukkaru Pamahavano Martar Martil Karn Girede in Nil Andaniamamilai Uhanda Vishayet Kesheshama Irekumirepe Sukamaha Karn Gayade Akarata de Kandyana Gurangari Chudayade in the Sheshatam Gunatta de Vendade. <clears throat> so one, then he questions this, the main 
nature of this jivatma is that he is totally subservient to the parmatma and one has to accept that subservience and act according to it then the question is raised very very important question because in shri vishnu philosophy we say <coughs> in the when jivatma attains salvation or moksha he goes to the divine abode of the lord known as paramapada or vaikuntha and there he is he engages in eternal servitude to the supreme lord narayan so to engage in service is said to be the most 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 undesirable thing in this world because in the indian context nowadays of course the things have changed there is always an eternal animosity between the mother in law and daughter in law it used to be like that in many cases or in most of the cases that is due to so many social factors psychological factors etc that is when the family system was robust in india until about 25 20 25 years ago as a general rule of course there are several exceptions so <clears throat> but even today there exists this situation in many cases or most cases where the employee hates the boss and he feels how much ever i for i work the boss is not happy and the boss feels how much ever i pay this bloody fellow he is not happy and he is not loyal to me so the in though there are several instances where the <coughs> employee is happy with the boss and the boss is happy with the employee in most of the cases it is not so because the boss always hates the employee and the employee hates the boss that is why it has been mentioned seva shvavritti rakhya so being in service or servitude of a person is like being a dog which is eternally subservient to its master so my guru used to say <coughs> that a person if he actually is a traitor in the sense he cheats his boss then in the next birth he is born as a dog in his house because the dog is eternally subservient to its master and many a times i have seen and i continue to see when in india you have these stray dogs of course in us i don't know whether you have them or not <laughs> in india in every town and every city stray dogs are there today even today and they give birth to several puppies and they are just roaming around in the road so suppose even <clears throat> you just go near them they try to follow you and if you show them a little bit of affection they will become subservient and if you give them little food they will be eternally subservient that means it is in the nature of the dog that it always wants a master and <clears throat> it is always eternal to the master it is always loyal to the master so unflinching loyalty exists in the dog that is especially reared up by the master reared by the master and i have heard about several instances where if the master suddenly dies the dog also gives up its life by not eating etc to in mourning of the death of its master but as far as human beings are concerned they feel that it is and also i think there is a saying it's a dog's struggle for existence that means just as dogs continue to struggle and please their master at any cost 
giving up their own sense of uh, happiness or uh, uh, living life in an easy manner. Similarly, a human being who is engaged in servitude also is reduced to the state of a dog. Because when you see <coughs> Excuse me. Because when you see a dog, so it guards the house of the master all the 24 hours. Even if it is sleeping, even if there is a small, when there is a small sound in the vicinity, it wakes up and it tries to protect the property of the master. Not only the property of the master, the, ma the physical, the body of the master, the and his children, his wife, his relatives. Anything the master loves, the dogs are engaged in protecting. But there it is, in a way it is voluntary, in a way it is involuntary because it is in the nature of the dog. Whereas, as far as the human beings are concerned, they are work, made to work like a dog just because they are paid a service. So this Sheshatva is always Dukkha Rupa, it is always the cause of misery. And 99% of the employees feel that they are not paid enough, they are not treated well, boss is not happy with them, etc. Et so then, that's why he says, he, he raises the question, Sheshatvam Dukkha Rupa Mahavanno Bhattil Kangira Dinnil then he says, though it is partially true, or predominantly it is true, it's not, it does not hold good, the rule does not hold good, or the concept does not hold good in all cases. <clears throat> because if a person likes something, like somebody, then what happens? He voluntarily engages in the service of that person. <clears throat> so in other, other Sampradaya Krantas, there is a beautifully, beautiful statement which says, Mahishi Svenatika Aliduvari Pune. A very beautiful instance is mentioned where a king or rather an emperor, he was roaming around <coughs> in the royal gardens along with his wife, the queen. So the body of the queen was so soft and uh, so fragile that <coughs> after walking for a few steps, she started to sweat. So, <coughs> When there is sweat, it has to be wiped. So to wipe the sweat, will the emperor do it himself or will he ask his servant to do it? Of course, there are several servants who are ready to do the job. But when the empress or the queen <coughs> sweats by walking for a few steps because her body is so fragile, then what does the king do? He himself engages in the service of his queen and wipes away her sweat. Though he is the emperor of the whole of, emperor is the king of several kings. He is the emperor under whom there are several kings, several lands, several kingdoms. He actually does not ask some servant to wipe off the sweat of his queen. He himself does it because he feels it is enjoyable to do it. So, one devishayat sheshama irikkumirappi sukhama hakkan gayane. And he does not feel it is a burden or it is below his dignity to wipe the sweat of his wife, the queen. In fact, he enjoys doing it. Similarly, <laughs> So if a person likes somebody very much, then what will he do? He will himself automatically engage in the 
servitude or service of that person. And my father, many a times, he keeps giving, giving this example. Suppose the President of United States has come to the house of Keshav Das. And he is chatting with him. And several people are sitting in front of him. And suppose he says, Oh, I have forgotten my specs in the car. Can anyone bring it? Five people will rush. I will bring it. I will bring it. I will bring it. <laughs> so nobody has asked them to do it. But they feel that if they are of some service to the President of the United States, then they have helped themselves. They feel, they, they feel privileged to do it. Because they have a very high opinion about that person. Though they may not, even if they don't respect him inherently, they know that he is the most powerful person in the world or something like that. So immediately they say, I will do it, I will do it. So the here service is not forced upon them. It is voluntary. And when service is voluntary, it becomes, it begets happiness. So that's what Pralilokacharya says here. And here, some very important verses are quoted by Manohan Mahan. He says, Sarvam Paravasham Dukkham, Sarvam Atmavasham Sukham, etc. Very, very important verses that are universally applicable and very much applicable to our day-to-day -day life. These two verses, I would like to have the source because the book that I am having, the sources of these two verses are not given, or rather four verses, not two. So those verses we will examine and understand them in the next class. So I will conclude this today's class here. If you have any questions, you can ask. Swami, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, you were speaking about uh, prostrating. Yes. Uh, prostrating to a person and a person prostrating back. And uh, I noticed that uh, perhaps it's a small thing, but um, it seems like it is in the Tenacharya Sampradaya, there's a tendency for everybody to prostrate to each other. And in, uh, there are also other people, as you said, who follow more the Vanashram system, like the, Desh, uh, the Deshika Sampradaya people. They're, they're following the, um, more the Vanashram system, where somebody in a higher caste or somebody in a higher ashrama, like the Sannyasa ashrama, is prostrated to by grahastas. But uh, the, the Jir Swamis will only give the blessings and they will not prostrate to, to, uh, to a grihasta in Deshika Sampradaya. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so it's just an emphasis. Uh, some is somebody is emphasizing emphasizing more the Vanashram system, and somebody yes. is uh, emphasizing a little bit less, uh, emphasizing the this thing. So but, that is basically <laughs> raised a very uh, very subtle question because ninety nine percent of Sri Vaishnavas themselves don't know <laughs> this thing <laughs> because. The question raised in the works that deal with the uh, differences between the two sampradayas, <coughs> the issue is raised as do yetis also have to perform pratibandana? Pratibandana means prostrating in return. <coughs> so, as you have rightly mentioned, in the Tendachari sampradaya, they say, if a Sri Vaishnava prostrates to a yeti or a sannyasi, then even, the, even though the sannyasi is an uttama ashrami, he is called as uttama ashrami because he is having the most exalted, he is in the most exalted ashrama, namely sannyasa. So the sannyasa ashrama is known as uttama ashrama, and the person, a sannyasi, he is a known, uh, known by the word Uttama Ashtami. So, according to Tenatari Sampradaya, if the, even though the person is a Sanyasana and Uttama Ashtami, he has to prostrate back. <coughs> Whereas in the Adagalai Sampradaya, if the person is an Uttama Ashtami, he need not prostrate back because he is in an exalted uh, 
ashrama which actually forbids him by prostrating to people who are of a of an inferior ashrama the brahmachari grihastha or varastha but when two do you know when two sanyasins encounter each other who has to prostrate to whom are you aware of the truth uh, i would i would uh, i can only guess that the person who is elder and who has taken sanyasa sorry first. one minute one, one minute one minute are you aware of the truth uh, my my guess is that the elder sanyasi has to be prostrated to first no it's the uh, suppose there is a person who has taken sanyasa at his at the age of 30 and another person has taken sanyasa at the age of 60 <clears throat> but so the person uh, here the uh, person the person who has taken sanyasa at the age of 60 is now 70 years old and the person who has taken sanyasa at 30 is 50 years old then <clears throat> the person who has taken sanyasa at 60 years has to prostrate to the person who is taken sanyasa but who is 50 so the answer is how many chaturmasyas this person has done completed and how many chaturmasyas that person has done so the person who has done less chaturmasyas has to prostrate to the person who has done more chaturmasyas though he may be he may be according to that individual case he may be younger in age so the person who has done ch- more chaturmasyas has to uh, no the person who has done less chaturmasyas has to prostrate to the person who has done more chaturmasyas irrespective of his age this is the rule when two sanyasins encounter each other but as far as the it is known as yatinam pratibandhana vicharah the debate is titled like that so whether yati has to do pratibandhana or not according to adagana sampradaya no according to dharmachari sampradaya yes that is based on the <coughs> belief that shri vaishnavatva is most more important it gains precedence over the ashrama dharma so you are right in that question so uh, uh, just one other thing uh, uh, the the there's also a difference in the number of prostrations between uh, uh, between uh, tenacharya sampradaya and deshika sampradaya and that is that is uh, once again uh, <laughs> based on sentiment so even my father did a, gives a very beautiful example so when the when the when the sins committed by the person who yeah, is taken in taken into account he has committed so many sins that even if he prostrates 100 times it is not enough because he has committed this on so many sins that is why at least two so maximum is 12 according to adagalai sampradaya if not 12 at least four if not four at least two but when we take into account the greatness of the grace of the supreme lord it is enough even if once the person is once the person prostrates so when you look at the magnanimity of the supreme lord even one prostration is enough or one prostration is sufficient whereas when you look at the magnanimity of the sins committed by the jivatma then post probot prostrations are maybe done so this is this depends on sentiment rather than any rule so the desert in a very mundane example how many times should the <clears throat> a person who loves a, who loves his beloved how many times should he should he tell her i love you <laughs> he may tell 10 times he may tell one time he may not tell also but he may really love her <laughs> so it depends on that person you cannot uh, make rules for all these things because it is purely sentiment so <clears throat> people who are 
who go beyond the uh, letter, who deal with the spirit, spirit of prostration, they say it depends on your mindset. But when you see the amount of sins committed by the Jivatma, you say prostrate many times. But when you see the magnanimity of the person, the grace of the Supreme Lord, who is just like a father, so would the father uh, expect the son to prostrate 20 times or 10 times? No, no, stop, it's enough, come. He will say, come, and he may, if he is young, he may hug the son. If he is not <laughs> very young, he say, please come and say, why are you following all these formalities so much? Enough. To show your respect, you have prostrated once that is enough. Why are you prostrating so many times? If the, if the father really knows, that's what he will say. So from that point of view, the matter is So Swami, from the point of view of uh, prostrating and giving somebody else your, your papa or your, uh, your sins, uh, it seems like a very simple way to transfer sins by simply prostrating to somebody. I'm not sure if I, if I believe that this is actually occurring, but, uh, but uh, also in, in uh, I've read uh, Vedanta Deshika says that at the time of death, whatever Papa and Punya is finished, is left with the person, is distributed to his friends and enemies, the Punya to his friends and the Papa to his enemies. That is with regard to a Brahmagyani, not all persons. I see. That, that fact is concealed by many lecturers, many people who give discourses. <laughs> so Somebody, if there is a person, sorry? Yeah. Some, some other people also say that, uh, that when, somebody, when somebody approaches a guru and takes uh, diksha from a guru, the guru takes the karmas of the shisha and he has to suffer for those, uh, those, those karmas. Yeah, but, yeah, that is nice. As far as this, the first question you raised is concerned, Sauradasara Kritya, Vishantaf Papa Kritya is what mentioned in what is mentioned in the Upanishads. That is applicable only to persons who have had the vision of the Supreme Lord or Bhagavad Sakshatkara, who has become a Brahma Jnani. It is mentioned as Nishpanna Brahma Vidyasya. For whom the fruition of the Brahma Vidya has occurred. That means who has had the Bhagavad Sakshatkara. In the case of such a person, when he passes away, then <clears throat> those who like him will become the, those who are his friends, they will become the recipients of his punyas. And those who hate him, hate him will become the recipients of his papas that are left over. Of course, all these things are there. If something is left over, then they will become the recipients. But that is with regard only to the persons who have attained the fruits of Brahma Vidya, that is Bhagavad Sakshatkara. Not with regard to ordinary people like me or others. But in regard to uh, in regard to Tenacharya Sampradaya and Deshika Sampradaya, in Deshika Sampradaya there's a Bharanyasam um, ceremony, at, or it, I don't know if it's actually a ceremony, but there's a stage in life where they do the Bharanyasa. No, it is, it is a ceremony only. It is a ceremony only. That is why it is called as Upayanushtana in Sanskrit by them. <clears throat> whether, it can be, whether it can be ceremonized is a different question. That is a very highest, higher level question, which is not very settled, which we will not discuss now. But it has, it has been made into a ceremony, separate ceremony. Yes. So the, the, the idea, the idea is to transfer the burden of sins to. No, it's not the <laughs> that is, to the Lord. Uh, burden of sins. It is the responsibility transfer the uh, responsibility rather than transferring sins. So you transfer your responsibility of attempting to attain moksha to the supreme Lord or to the Acharya. So. so <clears throat> So you have, suppose I have taken a loan of $10 million from a bank. Whose responsibility is it to be repaid? It is my responsibility in the sense. It is the responsibility of the person who has taken the loan. 
and nobody else is responsible. So the responsibility of liberating myself is not mine. I have transferred that responsibility to the Supreme Lord. That is what is known as Bharan Yasa. That is giving away or keeping the responsibility of the protection of my, myself to the Hindi Supreme Lord. So you transfer the responsibility of protecting yourself to the Supreme Lord. That's why Vedanta Deshika says, Nyasyatvat Padapadme Varadamide Varam Nirbharo Nirbhayosmi. So when you have a debt to be paid, for a person who is responsible and honest, he is always in the back of his mind that sense of repayment of the responsibility of the sense of repayment of debt always exists. So when the debt is repaid, ah, oh, today I am very happy, all my debts are repaid. You will see. So Vedanta Deshka, after doing Bharanyasa, he says, now I have transferred the responsibility of protection, protecting myself to your feet. So Nirbharaha Nirbhayaha Asmi. Now I am totally liberated. I am totally unafraid of anything because my it is your response, it has become your responsibility to protect me. Ensure my liberation. But the Tanajari Sampradaya says, who are you to protect uh, transfer that responsibility? Only if the responsibility is given to you, then you can transfer it. That responsibility has not been given to you at all. Who are you? You do not belong to the Supreme Lord. You belong to the Supreme Lord already. So who are you to transfer the responsibility? But there one more thing is, have you had that realization that you don't belong to yourself but to the Lord alone? So at the highest level, Tannajari Sampradaya is correct. <clears throat> but until we feel that I protect myself, then what happens? You have to do it. So it's a very, it's not like this is correct, that is correct, this is wrong, that is wrong. They are true at different levels. So there is a, the, in the Deshika Sampradaya, they make it a, uh, there's a formality that they go through. But, yes, it, yes. but actually and for all, all, all Vaishnavas, we have to feel like this. We have to think that... Uh, in that also there are three three types. Two types are prevailing now. Ukti Nishta Krama and Acharya Nishta Krama. Are you familiar with that? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you know everything about the Sampradayas. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Ukti Nishta Krama is followed in one particular sect. Whereas Acharya Nishta Krama is followed in another particular sect. But ultimately there is one more Nishta called Svanishta. So the, it is it actually has to culminate in Svanishta. That is what my Acharya used to say. So Ukti Nishta also has to... <clears throat> so ultimately it will, it's all at, at the end it is almost one and the same. Only the uh, way the words are mentioned are different. <laughs> Usages of words are different. <laughs> yes. Krena jet drama, jet yesha, jatura, jaturakshari, kamas tam, prabadjente, jentavo, hantamar, shah, unyambo, jivikas, ay, papatran, takshayaita, shimana, virabhut, bhumo, rama, mjadiva, kraha, nikta virinta, virang, shaybu, teha, rama, jepadam, boja, samash, nashali, maha. Thank you very much, Swami. Namaskar, Swami.